Welcome to Pop Turnative, where we dive into topical discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. Here is your host, Peter Romoliotis, aka PD Beats. PD Beats here from Pop Turnus, me to Lennon Parham about Little Demon, which is premiering August 25th on FX. Welcome to the show. Thanks so much for being here. Thank you so much, PD. Um, it's a pleasure. <laughs> it's really crazy. It's really amazing. You've worked um, live action. You worked animated. Is it all storytelling yeah. for you or does the mindset change a little bit work wise? I think the mindset changes because when you okay. get into the booth, it's very like, uh, you know, you just want to give options because the an like it's and it's also in stages. So when you go in initially, there's no animation. You're just working off a script with the director or the creator. Um, and for this, I was lucky enough to Aubrey Plaza and I, um, well, we go way back, not to brag, but, <laughs> <laughs> um, she and I would be like, we would run a full scene. So she would be in another booth and I would be in a booth and we'd all be on zoom and we could like run the full scene, which felt really good. And it always made, I think the performances realer and funnier. Um, there's also like lots of improv that's happening. Um, so that's really satisfying as well. When you're first approachable Little Demon in terms of the context and the synopsis yes. of like what's happening, right? Daughter yes. of Satan, the Antichrist and everything coming of age. Mm -hmm. What's going through your mind? Because I feel like I have a lot of questions. <laughs> well, first of all, uh, I mean, when I heard Antichrist and I heard Mother of Satan, I was all in. Yes. I mean, from, from the get-go, the content it's hilarious and something you could only do really in animation like mm -hmm. how expensive would the show have been had they done it live action you know so um yeah i w i mean i really didn't have any hesitation mostly because i knew aubrey and i also know seth and kieran um kieran was actually one of the creators was uh, in my 101 improv class i was his teacher a thousand wow. years ago and so <laughs> it felt like really full circle um, I, I put myself on tape in my daughter's closet, you know, uh, during the pandemic for this. So, but I mean, also the character is just so phenomenal. You She's know, it's funny. I wonder if you like, I'm wondering, it's more, I think about it, like a lot of voice act people, a lot of actors must have during the pandemic, like, yeah, were like wanted to work in voice acting because they could do it from home all the time, basically. Totally. Yeah, I did. I think I did a Bob's Burgers. I yeah. did Lightning Wolves all from my closet and yeah. I would have a full setup and I'd have to get squatted on the floor. <laughs> all my auditions I do from home for voiceovers. Yeah. Why do you think, cause I've, I've interviewed a lot of voice actors in the past, London. And why do you think, like they all say they think that animated, like especially adult animation, like little demon, mm -hmm. it hits differently. It hits harder and it hits differently. I'm just curious what, what you think about that? What do you, th why do you think, you know, animation hits differently or resonates a little differently compared to like live action or a sitcom? Do you, do you, do you have any? I don't know. There's something about it not being real humans, mm -hmm. live humans that you see that like it lets you push the bar a little bit. And I think the satire of, of humanity is, is more present in an animated show. Um, yeah, you can just do things you know, you could do things like in an R rated adult, <laughs> like yeah. animated show that you can literally never do. I mean, even on HBO, like we're talking some, some above like Game of Thrones stuff in mm -hmm. this, in this show. I mean, yeah. in the pilot episode, I watch her put like chicken bones up her vagina. Like that is, it was, <laughs> it's insane, <laughs> but it's like, it's there and it's how she transports herself to the other world and like my character is like there's no judgments you know do what you gotta do well there's a lot of i mean it's even like if you start reading up about little demon i mean it's 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 genre bending it's like horror it's comedy it's anime there's so much kind of happening yeah and i totally. just feel like you're kind of just like you know i've watched a few episodes like you're kind of <laughs> just like thrown in yeah and like you don't really know what to do <laughs> I'm the neighbor. I this is not, you know, not my wheelhouse, like satanic verses and like <laughs> like like uh nether worlds, etc. Like I've never had a face to face with the devil yeah. or it's a whole know, new world. Carried away yeah. by cockroaches or 
anyway, but she's, I think she's an ever curious character yeah. and, and she's like down to clown. Like mm -hmm. she's whatever is going to bring her a good time. She's, she's up for it. And yep. she's really loyal to Laura, even though Laura <laughs> doesn't necessarily return that. I think she earns her Laura's respect over time. Cause Laura is like the ultimate loner because yes. she's been burned so bad in yep. the past. And so my character really, I think, opens, cracks open her heart in a way. Um, Absolutely. Which is, is, there's like a real sweet, like, ride or die sister feeling to the to the arc with, with our characters. 100%. You look at a lot of projects you've worked on in the past. You know, you've worked yeah. in different genres, but you worked on a lot, a lot of comedy. You enjoy working in comedy. And totally. I'm just curious because I'm, I'm noticing it now more and more when I watch a lot of things. I mean, we're not reinventing the wheel here, Lennon, but yeah. I feel like there's, I've always looked at comedy with that serious undertone lens. Like a lot of shows and movies kind of tack that are funny also tackle a lot of important kind of life issues and a lot of things yeah. that happen. I'm curious for someone that's worked uh, on some of the best, you know, TV shows and films, like, have you, did you ever look at comedy with the serious undertones as well? Or did you kind of focus just on oh, the no, making for laugh? Sure. Yeah, for sure. Like this, the funniest comedy to me is also the saddest and mm -hmm. the darkest, like it's all connected. It's usually, you know, you're, you're meeting people at these, at these crossroads in their lives and they make an insane choice. I mean, you think about the saddest days of your life mm -hmm. right now and there's always an insanely funny moment inside of that. Like yep. you're at the funeral and something crazy happens, you know, yes. like, um, so that those, the, the, those things go hand in hand and we need the comedy to break it up. You know, we need it to, to balance. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's true. Cause you look at, you know, the house, which you were in with Amy Poehler and Will Ferrell. I mean, you know, yeah. that way, like out of control, you know, underground <laughs> casino in their house, yeah. but yeah. I mean, they're doing it because they do not have the finances to put their daughter to university. Exactly. You know what I mean? To exactly. college. Like, and it's like, wow, you know what I mean? Like serious undertones. Yeah. And it also, it's like, it taps into this need that I think all humans have, especially that film, to like feel alive. Yes. You know, they're all missing something in their lives. My character is constantly in exercise gear, probably has has kids, but like you never see them. <laughs> like, yeah. Um, and she's definitely like she needs something. She mm. needs something, and it turns out to be an MMA fight with another housewife. You know. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I love that movie, <laughs> but it's so true to think about. And, you know, I always, I always have that lens on me now. We're like, we're laughing, but they're in yeah. this situation because of something pretty, like pretty big and important that they have to like figure out. That yeah. Not I mean, able the, to stakes, figure out. the stakes make the comedy funnier, yeah. I think. No, and absolutely. also to the reality of it. Like if it's grounded, like in this show, it yeah, we're, we're, we're set in, you know, in hell or <laughs> partially in like another realm or something like that. But like, it's the most grounded version of what we understand to be hell or to be mm -hmm. a nether world. Like we set the rules and then we follow those rules, you yes. know? So it's believable inside of its insanity. hundred percent. And you know, Lennon Parham is a storyteller. That's what you do, basically. That <laughs> is the profession. Is it safe to yeah. say your favorite thing about storytelling is basically transforming and diving into these worlds of little demon, minx? Is that the best mm -hmm. part about it? You know... Or one yeah, of them? I, I do. I mean, I really do love love storytelling. Yes. And, I, and I do love sort of... Uh, I don't know, showing all the, the sides of a character, you yep. know, like, and subverting expectation. I do that in my own life. Mm -hmm. Like what you see is not what you get. You know what I mean? Um, there within us all contains multitudes. So um, yeah, just sort of showing all the different facets of like, and the insane things that come out of my mouth when we were improvising for, <laughs> for this and then, and Seth and Darcy and Kieran were just like, yes, more of that, more of that. And hopefully they kept a lot of it. But um, yeah, I do. I, and I think it's also really important. I think storytelling, I think comedy, um, you know, as 
as much as it is entertainment, I think it's necessary. I think it's necessary in our time right now that we have moments where we can escape to another world, Absolutely. think about something else, laugh, make fun of ourselves. Yep. Um, that's, it's necessary. It's a necessity. Absolutely. We need it for sure. And before we wrap up, Little Demons premiering on, on FX, August yeah. 25th, and they're going to be able to also watch the next day on Hulu and everything. When they get a chance to watch it, what are you hoping yes. they get out of it takeaway wise? Well, um, a, a couple lot. Latin phrases <laughs> to transport yourself <laughs> to another dimension, potentially. Um, yeah, I mean, I hope they laugh. I hope they enjoy these these characters and and escape and um, just forget about the insanity yeah. of the world because this world is even more insane. Oh, absolutely, <laughs> Lennon! Thank you so much for coming on Pop Turn. It was great chatting with you. You too, Petey. Thank you. Yeah, August twenty fifth, a little demon on FX, and then we'll be on Hulu as well. You have a uh, social media Instagram account people can keep up to date with. Yeah, it's just at Lennon Parham, Instagram, Twitter. That's pretty much it. Awesome. Well, this has been Pop Turner, youtube.com slash Pop Turner for previous episodes. Look out for Little Demon premiering August 25th on FX. Until next time, this is Lennon Parham and Petey Beats signing off. Thank you for tuning in to Pop Turnative. Make sure to check out our past episodes of Pop Turnative on YouTube. Be sure to like Pop Turnative on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. This has been an Autograph Communications production.